I'm gonna read from Matthew chapter 20 verse 13 and 16. But he answered one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Do you not agree with me for denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give you the last, I wish to give this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to, to do what I wish with my things or your eye is evil because I am good. I am good. We, we like to say in our church many times, our God is good. And one of the reasons is because we are a good news church. And we are one to live up to the goodness that we preach in this place. I believe that there's probably about three main categories people fall into in life. Those who experience fair things. Like things are done to them that are fair. They're just. When you get a paycheck on Friday, it's fair. Then there are those people who experience unfair things. For example, when you get treated unfairly, when somebody accuses you, when somebody makes fun of you, when somebody fires you for something you didn't do. When you experience unfair things. And then there is a favor. So there's fairness, unfairness, and there is favor. And we all like favor anybody here likes favor but many of us we like fairness in our culture fight for fairness has dominated every spectrum of society we have more lawyers and probably all of them put together in the world and all the lawyers are fighting for is for you to get what is fair you get upset when somebody is treated better than you in the family. And what do you say? It's not fair. When somebody gets a promotion and you were next in line, what do you say? It's not fair. Because we are a generation that fights for fairness while we dream for favor. God has a dream for us. His dream is for us to have favor. And today we're going to talk a little bit about this and then spend some time in prayer. I want us to understand one thing that there can be, pe there can be people in the same situation. One can be in that situation because they've done sin. And the other person can be in the same unfavorable situation because they are in the will of God. For example, water and alcohol look alike from a distance. But if you come close to water and alcohol and you smell it, you realize though they look alike, they are not alike. Two people can be in the same situation. One person can be there because of their sin and the other person can be there because Satan is attacking them and God is testing them. For example, we see Jesus hanging on the cross and beside him is a thief and on his other side is a thief. So Jesus has exactly the same situation as the thieves, except Jesus is there doing the will of God and these homies are there because they're getting their fair treatment. Jesus is getting unfair treatment, but the brothers are getting a fair treatment and both in the same situation. That's why we have to be careful to quickly label people that they are in sin just because their situation looks like yours and you are in sin. That's why we have to be careful to label people immediately that oh this is a situation that they're going through is something very challenging. They're passing through their cross. They must be under attack of the devil. But sometimes when you are on your cross you're not under attack of the devil you are under attack of the sin that you fostered in your life there is a difference between lion attacking you and you growing a cub in your house every day and that cub that you grew came and attacked you there is a difference between being on the cross because you're in the will of God and being on the cross because you're a thief one is fair and the other one is unfair. Joseph and Samson were both in the prison. Joseph was in the prison because he ran from sin. But Samson was in the prison because he ran with sin. Both are in the same predicament but for different reasons. 
your situation you must understand as a Christian before we talk about the favor of God when you are in unfavorable situation you must ask yourself a question am I in it am I in the will of God or am I out of the will of God is this thing that I'm facing right now is there a sin in my life that I've been nurturing or is this simply because I've been pursuing God and the enemy has been attacking me because God cannot pour his favor until we deal with the causes of our unfavorable situations both people can be in the same situation one can be in it because of his sin and the other one can be in it because he is being attacked and both can look alike when you have a sin in your life and you have an attack because of your sin you must repent of that sin it's gonna do you no good to rebuke the devil it's gonna do you no good to come against the devil if you got a devil sitting on your kitchen table that you're feeding cereal every morning it's gonna do you no good to keep mopping the floor if the faucet is open it's gonna do you no good if the sin is encouraged in your life if the sin is fed in your life and at the same time you're over here rebuking the devil the devil may not be the problem it could be your sin that has brought you in the mess that you are in and so we as the church we rebuke the devil we hate devil we do not like anything he does but we must understand devil can do nothing without sin devil can attack you externally without sin but he cannot destroy you internally until he has a right called sin whatever devil can do sin can do and whatever sin can do devil can do the best way to shut the door to the devil is to uproot the sin and deal brutally with it knowing then he will have no legal right to have an access to your life can somebody say amen I want to challenge you today as you are on the hunt to to achieve spiritual victory do not give any hint to the enemy and do not feed him at home with a spoon like that family that once one uh, went once hunting and brought a lion a little baby lion to the house and the owner came and said you cannot have the baby lion in the house because he has a killer instinct means at any point during his development a killer instinct kicks in and he forgets that you are wonderful people and that you've been treating him good he will just kill well the parents didn't listen to the advice of the men in the village and they kept growing the lion in the house until one day the lion in the house a killer instinct kicked in and the lion killed everybody in the house that's the difference between being attacked by the devil and spoon feeding one in your house therefore we encourage each one of us when you resist the devil or come against the devil at church make sure you don't feed him cereal at home make sure you don't nurture him in your own thoughts in your own way that you visit websites in your own ipod or in your own material that you read digest or absorb into your life two people can be in one situation one person can be there because the sin that they develop and the other person because the attack they receive but also we also know that two people can be in one situation one person can experience fairness and the other person can experience favor for example there are many of us in here today for you to pass chemistry exam is fairness it's easy it doesn't take much effort and for some of us here to pass chemistry requires two bottles of anointing water because without God's grace chemistry will crush every fiber of our being there are some of us here that when it comes to Valentine's you have girls or guys literally it's like bees on honey you just people are attracted to you and you're not that good great looking you don't have much what it takes but people you're just like a magnet you attract people and there are others of us in here to get a date it literally requires few days of fasting <laughs> it does not come naturally for some people to get a job it's very easy for other people they apply at 50 different places and it's like they're like a parasite they walk into the interview people just don't like them 
what comes easy for one comes literally impossible for the other and so you must understand there will be areas in your life where things will be fa fairness you will just get easy and there will be areas of your life if God doesn't touch with his favor you're a mess you're just not gonna make it if God is not gonna touch with his favor that area will never lift off the ground for some people with their kids things are easy things are doing well with their kids and with other literally their kids are like offspring of a Lucifer every one of them just got demons inside and it's like you got a demon out of one the demon went into the other and it's just really it's just challenging with the kids and therefore you never judge people based on the areas that come easy for you when in those exact areas they have to pray and fast to have a victory one of the areas that come easy for me is sleep I have a gift of sleep I sleep so good and I sleep sometimes so fast that when my wife is still exhorting and blessing and encouraging me with her kind endless words that I'm already in a la la land and I could look at somebody who is cannot sleep at night and I can say ah you just don't have enough faith but see sleep is fair for me but sleep for you might require the favor of God and when you have three nights of good sleep for you you're dancing for joy because to you that's a miracle for me three nights of good sleep simply man I did something good during the day that made me tired we must understand what comes easy for one will come impossible for another and that's where we need the favor of God so one person can have a baby and they even think about abortion and the other person will go for eight months eight years or maybe even 10 15 years believing God for a baby that other person will think to abort what comes easy for you may come only by a miracle to the person who sits next to you and what comes as a miracle to you may come so easily to the person who's sitting right next to you right now for some people school comes very easy and for other people literally if they don't spend time with God every day they're not gonna pass basic math and it does not mean they are less spiritual than you it just simply means we all have areas in our life where we need God's favor and we all have areas in our life where we already have God's favor can somebody say amen, amen. Abraham had luck if I could say with money Abraham I mean he lied in some places and got rich it was a white lie it was a Christian lie kind of like she is she's not kind of stuff but still God just kind of blessed him financially yet Abraham could not have kids he tried his best he couldn't have kids Hagar couldn't have a husband but she could have kids we all will have those things that are they're just doing good in one area and in the other area you need God to step in and then there will be areas where things are going well but in other areas we need God to step in if you are here today you may be facing and needing a miracle in the area that I don't even care about and I today might be pleading with God for a miracle in the area you completely ignore and you take for granted every single day maybe your health you woke up today both of your hands your feet work your eyes can see your ears can hear and there is no sharp pain in your chest and you're complaining with the fact your tire was flat or maybe you complain with the fact you got a parking ticket at CBC but other people today have another problem they are relying to God to give them a body that sends no sharp pain so rejoice and thank God for the grace you already have while you are believing for the favor in the area where it's so hard for you yet in that area it's so easy for other people favor we read a verse we read a um, parable in this parable Jesus tells us a story he says one man had a vineyard and he decided to look for people to work on this vineyard he goes to the marketplace in the old days and in some of the remote areas in the world today this is still done like that too 
without access to Greg's list, without an access to a, a work source, or without an access where people can apply online, what usually a rich man would do, or employers, is he would send a servant to this certain place in the city where all the unskilled, low-paying workers would gather in hope for a job. These men had a very rough life because every day they worked at a different job site and every day they worked for a different employer. They didn't have a stability in their job. They would come every day hoping somebody would hire them for that day. And this man, instead of sending someone, he went himself to this market at six in the morning. That's when the Jewish day, the work day began, not at nine, six in the morning. He went in there and he took some men and he hired them. But the Bible says that the first men he hired, they agreed with him on the price. Which I am assuming this is how it happened. He came and he says, anybody looking for work? Hey, it's me, it's me. I am looking for work. How much are you going to pay? He says, well, how much do you want? Can you give me one denarii? A denarii in that time was equivalent to $7.50 or about $8. For that time, $8 a day was considered a Roman soldier's average pay, which was a, you know, like a government job. So it's considered a very lofty salary. $8 per day, we, I mean, just not long ago in America, to receive $1.50 per minimum wage was considered a luxury. And so $8 2,000 years ago was a lot of money for that day. So I can assume the owner says, oh, fine, I can pay you one denarii. Let's go to work. They go and they work. He goes at 9 o'clock in the morning again and sees some other brothers. He says, guys, I have more work. Do you want to go work? Yes. Except these guys don't ask for a salary. They don't even find out how much they're going to get paid. I mean, they go on a limp risking, what if he doesn't pay us? What if he's going to say, well, whatever you did for this day is for the glory of God. You know, like one of those Christian people, can you do it for the glory of God? It means I'm not going to pay you. He comes at 12 o'clock and he gets guys and says, could you go and work at my vineyard? They said, yes, we'll go work at your vineyard. But these guys don't ask him, how much will you pay us? Then he comes at 3 o'clock and hires guys again. And then last time he comes around 5, 5 o'clock in the evening. One more hour left, left till 6 o'clock to send him home. And he hires guys and he doesn't tell them how much they're going to get paid. Imagine you're working for a boss who hired you and you never asked him and you never know how much you're going to get paid. That's a lot of trust. That's a lot of risk if you have a family to support. The day is over. And so the guys who came last, who only worked one hour, you know, they're surprised. They're like, I wonder if we're going to get paid at all. If he just simply took us and made us occupied, he comes and he gives them eight bucks. He gives them a full day's wage. You, you can imagine the smile on their face. You can imagine the joy. Oh my God, this, this is so awesome. You know, we did not waste all day. Though we were waiting, we actually got paid for the hours we did not work. How awesome is that? Then the guys who came first, who bargained, and who agreed and probably had it signed by their lawyer, make sure they get one denarii. To their greatest surprise, they got one denarii. Except now, instead of being thankful for receiving a luxurious pay, they started to grumble. Because why didn't they get more since they worked longer? And the owner looks at them and he says, I thought you wanted one denarii. You asked for one denarii. These guys did not ask for anything, going on the limp, trusting, I am going to be good and I'm going to be fair. But you guys asked for a salary and you got a salary. I want to share with you a few simple nuggets from this. People who fight for fairness rarely experience favor. When you come to God and you bargain for fairness, you set your limit. 
and you begin to put a limit and you begin to say that this is what I want and that's it I am going to work eight hours and I want eight times ten eighty dollars when you set a limit for your life you will have what you bargain with these men who got hired at six o'clock they only received what they worked for not one dollar more not one dollar less the guys who got hired last they did not get what they worked for they got so much more on the top they worked for one hour and got paid for 12. that is favor favor is not when you don't work at all and you get money some of us think that's favor that's called laziness and steroids favor is when you do work but the work that you do you get rewarded much more favor is not when you don't study for your school and you show up at the math exam and God just supernaturally downloaded all the knowledge and you know all the answers that's called plagiarism that's not favor favor is when you do study but maybe you did not have enough time to study and God adds his touch to it and you receive more than what you actually studied for favor is when you sow a peanut and you don't receive a peanut back but you receive a hundred peanuts favor is not when you I worked for one hour and I received that's called fairness favor is when you get what you also did not deserve I want to encourage you this evening to remind you your God allows you to set a limit on him you can experience his faithfulness or you could experience his favor the guys who had hired at six o'clock they experienced that the owner who hired them was faithful the guys who had hired at six in the evening experienced the owner that hired them was full of favor how will you experience God many times we allow our wallet to determine the size of our dream many people allow their education to allow to measure the size of the expectation of the kind of future they want um, let me ask you a question the future you dream in your mind can it be accomplished without God the dreams you have in your heart can they be accomplished without God's favor can they be accomplished without faith for most people the things we ask of God can be accomplished with enough discipline effort connections and human input God is not necessary and guess what we're gonna get we're gonna get a denarii at the end of putting all the human effort nothing more and nothing less God does not want your future to depend on your education God wants your future to depend on your faith and his goodness and his love for you God does not want your future to reflect your discipline he wants your future to reflect his goodness he wants you never to be able to brag and take credit for yourself and say look what my discipline prayer and fasting has done he wants you always to be able to say I prayed I fasted I gave but what God gave me supersedes what I inputted in he added his favor on the top of that There was a time Jesus came to a city of Nazareth and the Bible says he could not do mighty works there because of the level of their faith. I'm thinking Jesus, mighty works. He did few works, but he couldn't do much. He couldn't give them a denarii for an hour. He only gave them a denarii for 12 hours because their faith constricted and restricted his ability to do mighty things in the world we live in today especially in our society in America if you are educated you will go to school for about four to eight years 
Then you're gonna spend from four to eight years paying off that school. And then after you get your job, you get married, you get your house in a nice neighborhood, you get a car, everything of course is on credit, and then you spend your life slowly beginning to gain things. And you don't have it if you don't work for it. In the spiritual world, where you are connected with God, this world works differently. In this world, your efforts and your work is necessary, but God's touch and God's favor is expected. When God's touch comes, what other people work for and apply for and have degrees for, somehow God just kind of super and just kind of gives you that lift and He lets you have more of what you could have. It's like the story of one man who went fishing and as he was fishing, he took, when he would catch a big fish, he would always throw it away. Only keep the small fish. And a neighboring fisherman noticed that and he came to him and he says, I've noticed you throw away all the big fish. He said, do you have a problem? You don't have a license or something? He said, no. He said, the frying pan I have in my house is small. So he says, I only catch fish that could fit my frying pan. And the guy looked at him and he says, fool, why don't you buy a bigger frying pan? See, the guy didn't click in his head that you can actually buy a bigger frying pan. And that's exactly with many of us. Our dreams many times are this big because, well, that's my education. Well, nobody in my family graduated from college, so guess what? I am not going to graduate from college either. Nobody in my family has a happy marriage. Everybody's divorced, has kids all over the world. They're like fathers of many nations, everywhere. Nobody's stable, so that's going to be my life. So I shouldn't aim for anything bigger because that's what I've seen in my family. You know what? Maybe this frying pan your family has been cooking stuff on needs to be thrown out of your mind and you need to get a new frying pan that allows God to move. Many of us, we do not give place for God to move because I am only going to get what I work for. I am only going to get what I have education for. I am only going to get what I have connections for. And God says, can you squeeze in all of that efforts that you do and just give me space to do whatever I want to whenever I want to. This doesn't mean you don't work. It simply means you work, but you also add faith knowing your God has favor and goodness and He likes to squeeze it in once in a while to some people. God thinks different than you think. God is bigger than you are. Your efforts, you are a human being living in the world He created. All the laws you're following, they're the laws He orchestrated. And he is outside of laws looking for a hole in your life called faith. Where you say, God, I'm working my best. I am studying the hardest, but I'm also spending time in prayer. Because I want you to make things better and faster with your grace, not just my efforts. I want to work for an hour and get paid for 12. I want to sow a seed and I'm not saying that I want to do little. No, I just want to do much and have God multiply and magnify that. Because He can do it. I'm His child. Why not? And this is what He's showing. He is good. But can I give Him space in my schedule? Spend time with Holy Spirit. Spend time in prayer. Why? Because I don't lean on me alone. I trust in the goodness and I want the favor of God. I remember when it was, you know, our time and me and my wife, we started to plan for, for, you know, when we want to buy our own home, like actual, like not a rental, but a home. And I'm like, we need to save this much money, this many years, and this is how it's going to happen. And I calculated and I looked at the timeline. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have grandchildren by the time my timeline is going to come to pass. I looked at my rentals and I'm like, how long is it going to take me to pay these off? And once I printed that and it showed me the date of like 2070 or something, I looked at that and I was like, am I going to be alive by that time? <laughs> and I remember looking at that and I said, is there a way that year can happen next year? I said, but I don't have a job that pays that. I don't know people who have that kind of money or who are willing to share with that kind of money. I was like, wait, but I have a God. You might say, but that's all you have. Sometimes that's all you need. Do you know why people in third world countries experience more miracles? Because they don't have many, many options. For them, 
Medicine is not everything because they don't have any. Leave space for God. When you go into school, make room for God. To catapult you. I met a young man who's studying to be a scientist in Massachusetts. Gave, gave time for God. Every day he says, Vlad, I spend a lot of time with the Lord. And he says, I was studying for this, um, I'm not mistaken, I think it's bachelor's. And he's like, I was really looking for money. And next thing that happens, he applies for some scholarships. And he wins a full PhD scholarship where they will send him to another state pay him some over seven or eight hundred dollars for housing they will pay him some five hundred dollars for food every month pay for him while he's studying for his phd so he's not gonna leave with 150 grand in debt he's gonna leave about 60 grand in savings while he finishes his phd why not that's my and your god make room for supernatural make room for the impossible after you apply all the medicine take the anointing water and spray on that too when you have applied and you've done everything get on your knees and say God this is what I'm doing but I know Mary got pregnant without a man I know Adam had a child at the age of 100 and Sarah at the age of 90 I know slaves left Egypt being so rich and so wealthy that Egypt collapsed because of economical problems God I know you provided for more than a million Jews in the wilderness 40 years every single day you get water from the rock God I mean you can cause Things to happen you are my God I know you can find a hole to squeeze a favor in my life because somebody say amen. amen you guys let's not settle for fairness we aim for more we want more than fairness we want more I don't want our church to be a reflection of our gifts well their music band their pastor they speak well that's exactly the size of the church no I want a size of our church to reflect the size of our faith not the size of our talent I want your life to reflect the size of your faith not the size of your abilities I want to challenge you today enlarge your faith it's not just about your works you may say oh nobody in my family is going to help me listen in your family you have a heavenly father who owns cattle on thousand hills all gold and all silver he says is mine and I give power to the wealth he says amen don't aim on your efforts Peter fished all night and after that the Bible says cut nothing came so discouraged disappointed and Jesus comes to Peter and he says Peter I want you to go to the other side and catch so much fish Jesus that's, that's not possible but Peter still did it and he experienced that it didn't take a whole night it took one time and he got more fish than he could have gotten probably in weeks why because the favor of God yes God did not create science but he definitely can squeeze a favor in your study and cause your homework to go better God can do it can somebody say amen I think I've shared this story once but it's always worth repeating when American golfer was going to golf with the Prince of um, Saudi Arabia and after finishing golfing of three days and they, they spent a good time and the prince was driving the American golfer, uh, flying American golfer back to United States on his private jet. He asked him, he says, is there anything I can do to honor you for the time you've spent and for the training you've given me as a golfer? Well, you know golfers, they make good money. And he's like, you know, everything is fine. I don't need anything. But the guy insisted. And he knew the protocol of royalty means if a king asks you to give you something it's a dishonor if you reject it and so he says um give me a golf club and so he uh, said oh, okay i will give you a golf club and few weeks passed by and after that the uh, american golfer noticed no big shipments from ups and so um, one day he got a letter from the prince and as he opens the letter he was wondering how can a golf club fit into a letter he opens a letter and he sees a title deed to one of the largest golf clubs in the United States. See, when the American says golf club, he's thinking a stick. When the prince hears golf club, he's on a different frequency. He's thinking the largest land, the largest property that costs over $50 million. 
this is what you must understand your God is on a different plane and when you're here planning for these for these small dreams that do not include none of his touch and none of his favor and God will say about your life and my life like he said about Nazareth he says I couldn't do anything big their, their, their faith was this big the only thing they wanted is to have a BMW and to have a nice house and two children they didn't want to heal nobody. They didn't want to raise anybody from the dead. They didn't want to have a big church. They didn't want to cleanse the lepers. They didn't want to do anything great for my life. They didn't want to build orphanages. Their faith was this big and guess what? I have to honor it but they limited me. Let this not be said about you and me. Let us be a generation whose faith is large and say, God, we all can fit your favor into our life. Amen. People who have favor are people who do not settle for fairness. But let me mention one more thing about this. Is that when we, where does this faith grows? Faith for God to do great favorable things in our life grows. When you see other people getting what you are dreaming of. For example, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, these guys who stood there till the evening, they, at six o'clock, they watched their buddies getting hired. At nine o'clock, they watched their buddies getting hired. And at 12 o'clock, they watched their buddies getting hired. And at three o'clock, they watched other men getting hired. You can imagine, so at six, at nine, at 12, at three, that's four times they've seen somebody getting hired during that day. Now, four times of seeing somebody getting hired in one day, if they are close to you and you were supposed to get hired, actually that will intimidate you. You know, in testimonies in Africa encourage, but the testimonies that are here of the things you are dreaming of, sometimes they intimidate. When somebody gets a testimony of the things that you are dreaming of and they're testifying, you're like, why not me? Why, you know, and sometimes that could actually be depressing. When you get a testimony of somebody who's in the line with you and they're not that holy as you are. They're not as good as you are and they got married. They're not as you and they got the scholarship and they got always asked to speak and they, they're leading songs and they're getting promoted and I'm being overlooked and sometimes somebody else's promotion can actually feel like an intimidation. But if you are emotionally mature to get inspired by somebody's promotion, your faith will get stronger. When you don't see people as competition, but you will cause them to complete you, not compete with you, something will happen to your faith. Your faith will be mature and strong. I love listening to guys that intimidate slash inspire me. I remember listening this today about a pastor in Texas, you know, whose church grew 20%. Means it grew from about 18,000 people to 26,000 people in one single year. I listened to that and I was like, uh, oh wow, that's amazing. When they gave $13 million to missions in one year, $13 million in one year. When the, the guy that I, by the grace of God, hopefully get a chance to see this weekend in Walla Walla, where last week they had a youth service in Boise, Idaho and over 300 people gave their lives to Jesus in a youth service. And these are the guys that I see getting hired left and right. And when you have about four that you follow who get hired, after a while, you begin to convince yourself, I might be next. But when you are surrounded with guys who only get fired, not hired, next thing you know, you will be afraid, you might be next. When you're only surrounded with guys who stood there by 12 o'clock and got tired and left, you might be saying, you know what, maybe it's my time to quit too. Surround yourself with people who don't get fired, but for people who get hired. If you have a family crisis, surround yourself with people whose families are being turning around. It will challenge and strengthen your faith and inspire your faith. Can somebody say amen? amen. That's why we have the dream that we have. It's not because, but because we see people who have these things happening to them right now and right here. The way this people at the end who experienced favor, experienced favor was that they refuse to to be offended just Ilya, just come up they refuse to be offended at being not chosen you must understand that 
when six o'clock came and they did not get chosen, they probably got offended. When 12 o'clock came, nine o'clock, uh, three o'clock came and they, they didn't get chosen and yet when evening came and the same man who kept overlooking them already four times comes up to them and says, hey guys, could you come and work at my field? Now, if that would be some of you or myself, I, I'm imagining what will go through my mind. I would say, before I go there, can I ask you a question? What in the world did you find in those people that you didn't find in me? If that would be me, I would say, finally, or I would say, what took you so long? Why not me at six o'clock in the morning? But we don't see them saying anything of that. Imagine being overlooked four times and on the fifth time being hired and you still have a positive attitude. You must understand one thing about people who have favor. Most of them have overcome unfavorable circumstances first. People who have favor are not people who are lucky. They are people who had so many unfavorable things happen to them and they've chose to let it go. They've chose not to get it inside of them and something happened. When it came their moment, they were prepared for it because their attitude was an attitude of gratitude, not an attitude of complaining and grumbling and saying, God, why did you overlook me? Where were you when I was seven and that person came into the room and did this and that to me? Where were you when I was nine and my mom died? God, where were you? And instead of saying, where were you? A person comes in and say, God, I don't understand. I have a lot of questions, but you are touching me right now. And what matters right now is that you can use whatever has happened to me for my good. When we allow unfavorable to circumstances to get inside of us and we begin to allow bitterness to build up, something is going to happen. They are going to kill our favor. Hurt feelings ruin favor. When you let your feelings that get hurt get and rule your life, they will hurt your favor. But when you don't hold on to your hurt feelings and you let it go and you say, God, I'm going to trust you, something is going to happen. God takes those things that the enemy meant for evil and he somehow supernaturally, surprisingly begins to turn them for your good. The same water that killed the whole earth elevated the ark. The same fire that killed the strongest men of Babylon burned the ashes of the three Hebrew boys. And it becomes the same thing that kills other people. And when you let it go and you say, God, I trust you. God takes exactly the same thing that he did not sin. And he turns it around and actually brings you up through that thing because you did not let it get offend you. Our God is able to do that. I remember watching a story of a young lady who was surfing. And she, on a surfing board, she got bit by a shark and he bit off her hand. And when she, you know, came back and they did all of that operation and everything. And imagine a lady without a hand. I mean, that's just, that's just not pleasant. That is not beautiful. She could have lived all her life being offended and crying how she has no hand. And why did God allow a shark to buy that? She spent some time doing that. And after a while, she overcame unpleasant circumstances. And she said, God, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to honor you with one hand. I hope you're okay. She started to testify in churches how she overcame the hurt and bitterness toward God and how she learned to love and receive His love. Next thing that happened is she wrote a book about her experience. Well, the book hit New York Times. For those of you who don't know what New York Times is, if your book ever lands there, most likely you don't need a job for the rest of your life. You are set. You are pretty wealthy. That's exactly what happened to her. Well, it didn't end there. They made it into a movie that hit off really good called The Soul Surfer. Today, she would wish not to have her hand back. You know why? 
because she's more inspiration today and she touches more people a girl who could have lived with just a little bit of fairness she enjoys abundance of the favor of God why because she overcame unpleasant circumstances not knowing that one more step and behind those unpleasant circumstances is going to be the favor from a God she was offended at why did he allow a shark to bite her I want to encourage you today your God is the only one who's able to take your unpleasant circumstances and turn them around and make them into something so wonderful make them into something so beautiful and to elevate you through them you will see no way how could that happen this Monday we had a chance to meet one man I've heard a lot about him and he's the man who is probably one of the most optimistic men I've met in my life he does massage massages in soap lake what happened is that many years ago when his daughter was born his daughter was born paralyzed from head to her toes she could not move and he says that when she was born paralyzed he had an option you know he could have just complained and whine but what he started to do is he started to massage her feet and he discovered and started to learn on his own daughter who was paralyzed how nerves in your feet are connected to everything in your body he started to massage her feet in such a way and get a little bit of education on the side where he massaged her out of her paralysis. We met the daughter in the store. She's finishing her school. She, she's working. Today this man has a very successful business. Massaging and telling you everything about your health by touching your feet. Tells you everything about your digestive system. Tells you everything about where it hurts in your body just by touching his feet little did he know when a girl was born paralyzed he could have just simply cry about it or simply overcome unpleasant situation not knowing it will lend him into a career of helping so many people God can take lemon and make a lemonade out of it he can take mess and make a message out of it God can take your challenges and he can make a story out of it if you let him please do not limit and do not think do not let your disappointments incarcerate you don't let your the things you went through right now the things the abuses that you have had don't let it imprison you because if they will you will die but if you will let yourself out and say God I don't understand but I'm gonna worship you God I don't understand but I refuse to be incarcerated by my pain or by my past and I'm gonna trust that what you could do for somebody you can do for me God is gonna shed his favor upon your life favor doesn't come on anybody favor doesn't come on lucky people favor comes on people who went through hell and high water and who said God you are with me I am with you and you're gonna get me through and then they find themselves in the favor of God It's like the story of the mule, the old mule that the man wanted to destroy. He had a well that was dried up and the mule who was old and he decided to take care of both of them by throwing the mule into the well and covering the, the old mule with the dirt so he could cover the well and get rid of the mule. So he took the mule out of the barn and dumped that mule into the dry well. And well after that started to throw dirt on the mule and the mule was there, you know, old, sick tired and realizes they're throwing dirt at me and the mule had two options one is to cry about it the second one is what the mule did is the mule shook off the dirt and stood on it the more dirt they threw on him the more he shook it off and stood on it he realized if any moment I will say I am too tired to shake this off they're treating me so bad then he will die in that well but he shook it off stood on it shook it off and stood on it until the mule walked out of the well anything the devil throws your way listen don't cry about it shake it off and stand on it any blocks he throws your face pick them up don't throw them back and build something with it anything the enemy sends your way or any unpleasant situations listen do not just let them incarcerate or imprison you listen you are greater than that and God has favor for you it's the guys who got rejected at six in the morning at nine in the morning at noon time at three o'clock it's those guys who got favor it's the guys who got lied betrayed and all accused it's him who became prime minister it's Moses who ran for his life for 40 years who became a deliverer. 
it's not people who had everything good for them that's why I know I'm preaching to the right people because I'm looking at you and I know many of you are like Vlad many unpleasant things have happened to me you are next in line for the favor of God hallelujah my desire my prayer and my petition please don't let your disappointment incarcerate you don't let your hurt incarcerate you don't drag something from your past into your future Jesus said to disciples he says you're gonna walk into the city I want you to say to the city peace be to you he says if the guys are good the peace will stay there if the guys are not good he says let the peace come back to you this is interesting so if people are not good don't leave your peace on them don't waste don't drop your peace take your peace back have you ever met some people who are not good who took your peace and Jesus said take it back from them he says and if they will give you some dirt he says before you leave leave them their dirt don't take their dirt with you most of us this is what we do when we go into a relationship into a business deal or we go into something and we pick up dirt we carry the dirt for the rest of our life and we let them take our peace our joy our security our confidence our innocence and everything else the devil is a liar it's supposed to be the opposite amen well you have to look in your past and maybe somebody took your peace you take your peace back from there and you leave that dirt over there you said this dirt belongs here i'm walking with clean shoes into the next chapter of my life that's why the first divorce and people get married in statistically 50 percent the first marriage could end up in divorce the second marriage you think people would learn to do it better it goes to 60%, 70%. Why? Because people carry dirt from previous relationships into the next relationships. My friends, I want to challenge you today. Walk into favor. Let go of your disappointment. Let go of your questions. Let go of your hurts. Let go of the things that were done to you that were not fair. Let go of those things because your life can be in the favor of God. Maybe your dad and mom were witches. Like Nicky Cruz, his parents were witch doctors. Just literally pure witchcraft and he was a mafia in New York. And when God touched him, today he's one of the most famous evangelists around the world. Why is he having the favor of God? Not because everything was good. On the opposite, because things were bad and he overcame them. You and I are an overcomer. We will have a favor of God because we overcame the unfairness of life. Can somebody say amen? How many of you guys you say that's me and that's gonna happen to my life in Jesus mighty name.